All right, YouTube, so that's about the numbers. Welcome back. Here we go. We're doing an update here. We're looking at B2 Gold Corporation, ticker symbol BTG, right, listed here on the ARCA. Now, this stock, we first looked at it back here Monday, May 15th, and that's, what, about five months ago. And I remember mentioning that the numbers did look attractive. However, uh, I, again, I, I had a feeling that this was going to pull back and sell off a little bit. And this is why I mentioned that sometimes it's very difficult to have very good pricing and timing when it comes to one of these miners. And I did mention that you may be better off simply just investing into gold straight up, uh, the gold ETF, again, ticker symbol here, GLD. And I basically just want to show you guys the little comparison here, because as you see, May 15th, when we did it again, it did look um, attractive in the numbers, but I did mention this long-term symmetrical triangle here, these purple trend lines, and then I circled our apex, and I showed that we can either break towards the upside or we can break towards the downside, right? Symmetrical triangle is not bullish or bearish. It can go either way. Now, obviously... You know, stocks down here, 329, um, hit a low, what are we looking at here? 277, new low, and then we bounced off there and basically beeline directly to three and a half, and now it looks like they pulled it out, uh, pulled it back down, excuse me, towards the uh, bottom of this trend line range here. Now, we do have earnings coming up soon, November 8th, right, roughly two weeks away, Estimating a little below seven cents a share, 462 million. Now, if we come down here, first of all, we can see the market cap, a little over four and a quarter billion. The company's paying a very nice dividend for you right now, yielding almost five percent with the company trading about 12 and a half times earnings. Right, EPS is positive. Um, the last couple of quarters, they have beaten on the EPS side. However, we can see that it's kind of slowly dipping down. And, uh, of course, they had their big explosion in 2020 and have just slowly been dropping a little bit in the revenue. And, of course, it's hurting their profit margins as well. But if we switch over here quarterly, we can see, random steam friend, we can see that um, revenue has increased over the last several quarters, as we see, about $370 million, uh, mid to tail end of 22. And then you see a big jump there in Q4, up to almost $600 million. And we have pulled back. Looks like we plateaued maybe around like this $470-plus million mark. However, you know, it's about $100 million higher than it was at the same time last year. So, you know, definitely not a bad thing. And I do still say, in my opinion, that I do feel the stock overall as a company is undervalued. And over time, in my opinion, they should increase in value. But, of course, again, the problem is the, the value of the underlying stock here moves with the value of gold sometimes. So even if the company, look, as we see here, we come back, the company beat earnings right here, right? 333, the company beat earnings. But what happened? The stock dropped to 277 and hit new lows. Why? Because this whole time gold was going down. Now gold started to rise up, and look, obviously we can see the price of the stock have a big explosion, multiple green candles, and again, it climbed from 277 up to about three and a half. So the, the problem is not only do you need the stock value per share to be at an attractive price, but more importantly, you also need gold to be on a dip as well, right? So you need to you need to buy a gold miner when gold dips and when the stock value of the miner dips. So that's why like something like down here when it hit the bottom trend line here at like 315 or whatever it is, like probably like around there in my opinion, I probably would have stepped in and I would have obviously gotten beaten up before I made a couple of bucks. But you, you understand what I'm saying, right? You, you need all of these things to become much more attractive, much more of a discount and then you step in and you buy a company like this. So with gold now up to 1975, right, it was back up. It was down to like the low 1800s. So now with it close to 2K an ounce, you know, uh, unfortunately, I mean, overall, looking at the whole scenario, in my opinion, the metals may continue to rise because of the turmoil happening overseas. But, you know, again, that they may have it top out right here at around, you know, 2K, slightly sub 2K, and then they can keep it flat or potentially pull it back. So... You know, uh, unfortunately, they are tied together, and now we need the company to really 
post a good quarter here, and in my opinion, that'll potentially pop them out of the range, maybe towards the high threes back to those uh, $4 levels. Because if we bring in gold here, look, as you see, right, this is the big difference, right? This is the big difference. So as you see, gold, right, selling off, had a big dip here uh, late September, early October. That's when the stock pulled back and hit the lows. Now you can see gold has been rallying the last couple of weeks. So has BTG. But look, if you look at the right side of the screen here, look at this. So if you bought the stock right there, May 15th, you're down about 20%. If you bought gold straight up May 15th, you're down 2%. See what I'm saying? These are the differences, right? And again, this is a, a smaller company, you know, market cap of only a couple of billion. But just like with a lot of other stocks, as you see here, when they pay a dividend, right, they're going to go down because they're giving out money. So initially, they're going to have that dividend drop, just like, uh, you know, like a larger cap blue chip company. You know, like an IBM or a Verizon, right? We look at these companies, they're kind of hanging out, they're up a little bit, they're down a little bit. Then they pay their hefty dividend and the stock begins to slide down, right? Because they're giving away money. And as you see right here, we had kind of like a perfect storm, right? The stock paid the dividend and of course we had gold in a sell-off. So that that's why it was like the double, the double catalyst to kind of bring the whole situation down here. But again, this is why I said, right? Buy GLD instead of BTG, especially if it's not a very, very attractive price. And as you can see, again, with the percentages, uh, you, are, uh, you are down, excuse me. If you just bought gold, you are down one-tenth as much as those who bought BTG. However, again, not here to completely beat up the stock, right? Because we already looked at the numbers, and uh, we said that it does look attractive, but that's why I'm saying I'd rather buy a stock like this at three and a quarter than up here at four and a quarter. So very, very hard to tell again, because you are tied to the price of gold. But overall, I do like the company. Again, just a quick overview. I understand that revenue has been slightly dropping for the last several years. And if we go back here, looking at the annual numbers again, you can see consistently missing on the EPS side, uh, looking for a little bit of a bounce here. 25 cents a share for 22, as you see, looking for 30 cents here in 23. And of course, on the revenue side, very, very slight misses, but they have technically missed three of the last four years. But of course, beginning to pay their dividend uh, does make them much more attractive, in my opinion. Plus, I'm assuming that they're assuming that, you know, everything is going to go according to plan and the company's slowly going to grow because, as you see here, this was when the economy here in the States and, of course, more importantly, around the world really ran into a big, big roadblock here. And you can see that that is when they upped the dividend and continued to increase it. So we do have some really good signs here. And again, the debt, I believe we looked at this last time. Look at the debt here, $480 million back in 2018, then drops to about half that and then down to $110 million, $75 million, $57 million. So the company really technically is doing everything right. And a situation like this is just going to need some time. And of course, you know, you don't want the company to come out with any sort of negative catalyst at all. But overall, I'm pretty sure everyone is pretty bullish on it. And you can see, look at the cash and equivalents jumping up from 479 million. Now it's sitting still over 650 million. So uh, they had a big jump there in cash flow, and it has been dropping down for the last couple of years. But technically, again, on paper, still looking very, very attractive. Look, even the short-term assets outweighing the liabilities, almost five to one. And then we switch over here. I mean, you're talking, what, seven to one about on the long-term side? So the company really, really does look attractive on paper. I will admit that. Uh, but again, just to reiterate for the nth time, it is tied to the value of gold. And this is why it's very, very hard to, to time some of these situations. And again, I know a lot of you may think, oh, you know, this guy, I feel like he's always right. He always talks about situations where he's right. Well, we can look at a situation where I was wrong, and we look at something like ExxonMobil. I posted a video talking about a potential short-term trade on ExxonMobil because it was in this long-term range, right? And it, and it ran up and hit the top trend line. And I thought, in my opinion, it should start pulling back. It should start selling off. 
However, what I didn't realize was that oil, be, that's like the same time that oil was in like the beginning of that bullish rally when oil was down like in the 70s per barrel. Now you can see it's above 80 and, and we basically hit 90 just a couple of days ago. So the problem was even though the stock on the technical side hit a trend line and should have pulled back and, you know, I gave my whole analysis, the problem is – the value of ExxonMobil stock is tied to the underlying commodity of the business that they're in. So because the value per barrel of oil consistently kept increasing, the value per share of ExxonMobil consistently increased. And if memory serves correct, I think I may have mentioned uh, like, oh, I would think about, you know, rolling the dice and buying some puts here on the stock. I think ExxonMobil was like $106. And then gold went on a tear, and I think Exxon went up to like 115 or something. I don't know. I, I don't even want to look at it. I hate being wrong. But again, you know, we, we can all be wrong, and that's just a little comparison very similar to BTG. That's why I brought it up, right? BTG could be a good company on paper. If gold goes down, they're still going to take it lower. Exxon Mobil could be a good company on paper. If you buy Exxon Mobil, but oil's going down, ExxonMobil is probably going to go down. And that's what I'm trying to uh, explain to you guys here. But looking at the earnings again, you can see in the past they struggled. The last couple of quarters so far have been really good on the EPS side. And as you see, though, looking annually, the company has been really struggling for about the last seven years. Up, oh, getting a random phone call here. But more importantly, even on the um, on the revenue side here, you can see the last couple of quarters – very good, coming in above analyst expectations. Before that, they were struggling. And we switch over here annually again, and you can see. You see what I mean? Missing on the annual side, what is this, three, six, seven of the last eight years. So th this is what I mean. Like technically, on paper, this company could grow if we do our revenue to market cap comparison. Again, market cap about four and a quarter. Last year, they brought in one six. So they're trading like less than three times annual revenue, which isn't too crazy, but they do pay a hefty dividend. So that may keep the stock down. Plus, of course, we're seeing decreases year over year in revenue and, of course, in profit margin. So that's what I'm saying. It's like a situation like this. That, trust me when I tell you, they're going to take their time bringing something like this up. And this is this is why I keep saying again. Because remember, if you're bullish on a company like this, you have to also be bullish on gold, right? This is the point I'm trying to make. So if gold is about to top out or hit a resistance level and potentially reject and start selling off, you wouldn't step in and buy BTG at that time, as I mentioned with my incorrect call on ExxonMobil and oil. So now the problem is, again, you need to wait, in my opinion – you need to wait for a dip now back down in gold, which would then in turn dip the stock back down again, potentially below this uh, long-term trend line. And then that's where you would step in and scoop up shares and potentially catch that bounce in gold, which would translate to a bounce in BTG. And again, that would bring you probably, I want to say you might be able to get back to this mid-level here uh, by earnings. And again, even if, Gold isn't up. This company is reporting Wednesday the 8th. So like that Monday, that Tuesday, even that Wednesday, you may see the stock up with everyone, you know, pumped and stepping in, getting excited for earnings. They are looking for the earnings beat. So, you know, again, it, it, it's it's really, really hard to call. It, it really is because, again, they're t they're tied to a commodity, but revenue has been slipping over the years, but if we look quarterly, we kind of plateaued, right, at this 470 million mark. But now look at what they're expecting. They're expecting only 462 million. So they could potentially beat earnings and have a big rally up to four plus dollars. However, even if they beat, we're seeing that revenue is now lower than the quarter before and the quarter before. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, a little bit of a rough patch here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's why, like I said last time, I believe I looked at 
the misses that they had on the annual revenue and the EPS side. And that's probably what led me to my decision of simply buy gold instead of BTG. And, and again, not to pat myself on the back, but I, I, it looks like I did get that one correct for you guys. So if any of you stayed away from BTG, as you see, you know, it, it looks like it worked out. And now with the stock down, you know, 30% from our call. And of course it hit the new lows, 277. Now that's why I wanted to come back to it here with earnings in about a couple of weeks and just kind of reevaluate the situation. But the MACD has been rising and climbing, obviously, because uh, the stock began to rally here off of these bottoms. And then we had the dip in gold and then we had the rally in gold. So that absolutely exploded the MACD cross to the upside and that helped add to the momentum as well. Does look like we're potentially curling though. And uh, as you see here, the RSI did get above 70 on the daily. Now we're down to about 61. So I have a feeling unless gold really chunks up, chances are, in my opinion, that they might bring this back down here right around this mid Bollinger band. 50-day moving average level, 306, mid-Bollinger Band 308. So that, in my opinion, is the next key level. However, that may potentially cause the MACD to cross to the downside on the daily, and it could potentially add to a little sell-off momentum, and you could potentially see sub-$3. But, you know, you're going to have to take it day by day. Switching over here to the weekly, uh, where did this go, this candle? Hit a high of 346. Okay, so that spiked up to 346 with the moving average right there at 349. We had the bounce off the mid Bollinger Band, but we are technically down for the week. Again, very hard to tell because it is tied to gold, and gold did just have a rally. It's at almost 2K an ounce, so I'm not 100% positive if they're you know just going to pop it again and, and keep it running to 21, 21.50 an ounce. Or if they're going to say enough is enough and begin to sell it off, which, of course, in turn would bring BTG down. So, yeah, again, a li little bit of a little bit of a, a play that's that's a, just a little hard to call here. But I again, I'm always honest with you guys. I'm, you know, I'm not just going to say, oh, buy it because you like it and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm always going to be 100 percent honest. And if I don't know, I don't know. But it does look like the MACD recently crossed here to the upside on, on the uh, weekly. And the RSI here is only sitting at about 49 and a half. So even with that big run there, the RSI got up to maybe like 51 or something. So we do potentially still have some momentum here. And unless gold takes a big hit, maybe within the next week or so, um, we could actually try to retest this 50-day moving average of 349. But again... You know, it's uh, it's a quarter that's coming in just slightly down from the quarters before. So, I, again, in my opinion, I just want to be honest. I think this is very, very hard to call. And like I say, I would rather, you know, if you didn't get in down here, you know, at like 310 or sub 3, then obviously, you know, you, you missed the rally. So that's why if, if you're watching this one, contemplating owning it, I appreciate the fact that they pay a dividend, but remember there are a lot of other companies that pay dividends. And of course, uh, what the hell was I going to say? Wow, I just lost my train of thought. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just it's the inconsistencies that are scaring me. You know, again, they're looking throughout the quarters and the years, looking at how they reported. I'm not exactly sure if I would step in here betting that they're going to beat earnings. Yes. So what I was going to say originally, uh, my apologies, was that I would rather, like I always say, I would rather wait for confirmation and miss a small rally here, knowing that the company beat earnings, as opposed to just stepping in now and hoping that the company rallies and beats earnings, right? That's why I always say much, much easier to react as opposed to predict. But Overall, I'm going to end it there. Uh, I don't think there's really much more to say, but I just wanted to do an update here because I know that uh, a lot of people were watching the first video about BTG. And uh, again, cheaper stock pays you a nice dividend. So I know a lot of people may have been hyped about it. But uh, as you see here, so far, since we first looked at it about five months ago, you were just better off buying gold straight up.
and I'll end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. Share the video, like the video, and of course, more importantly, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. I will do updates on BTG, talk about large cap, small cap stocks. Uh, another mention that the Discord link is in the description of every video. I always advise everyone, in my opinion, to join the Discord. I've been making some phenomenal calls in the short term. Definitely could have made yourself a couple of bucks if you were in the last week or so. So, uh, you know, just consider joining the Discord. But I will do all of this for you guys. All I ask, do me a favor, push the subscribe button. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and they're volatile and they are very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. Hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. And I'll see you guys in the next video.